Hola amigos y amigas, you are now with Jocelyn and this is our weekly energy reading for the week ahead where we are gaining a deeper understanding and higher conscious awareness of the week ahead and how we can remain in alignment with our higher selves and really make the most out of the energies available to us, the high vibrational uh, energies available to us this coming week. This is a special reading, as always, they all are, um, but this one is post Sagittarius total solar eclipse. So I'm excited to see what kind of guidance we get after having experienced such a pivotal, intense, monumental, significant eclipse, right? And, and closing out this 18 month cycle. If you haven't checked out last week's reading and the journal prompts that I shared with you here on my channel for the eclipse, I definitely recommend that you check those out because we're really going to be feeling the effects of this eclipse for a minute. So tune into that if you really want to tune into the eclipse and all that it is gifting us. But without further ado, let's get into this reading. And I do want to say that um, I'm so honored to be um, receiving these messages and relaying these messages to you for us, for the collective. I have been re reflecting so much as this year comes to an end that I've literally been doing these energy readings every single week here on my channel. And I'm just so grateful for those of you that tune into this reading every week or often. It just is really affirming to me. I remember when I first started doing these readings like and filming them and just feeling like I don't know, like, is very new to me, you know, not knowing if I was doing it right or if, you know, like, I wasn't sure how it was all going to evolve. I was just listening to a calling and I felt called to do a reading like this, a reading that really focused more on us returning home to ourselves, remaining authentic, remaining on high vibrations and really focusing less on like, romance or relationships or career like a bunch of other readings are on youtube um, and really just make one about us connecting and embodying our higher selves so thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me i don't see myself stopping doing these anytime soon I'm going to keep doing them until I feel called to trans transition and evolve into something else, but just wanted to express my gratitude to you. So let's get started. And I've noticed that as I cleanse my space and cleanse my decks and really call in um, the most high universe, uh, angels, loving ancestors, spirit guides, sacred ones, father in the sky, mother in the earth, all these beautiful divine lights and beings that I call into this reading that as I'm shuffling the cards in preparation for this reading that some cards already try to make themselves known. So I'm going to lean more into that and listen to that and allow those cards to come into this reading. Um, so we, we already have some messages available to us here, but without further ado, let's get into this, y'all. Take a deep breath. I'm lighting some incense here. Sending you these cleansing energies as we open ourselves up to receive. All right. What's the overall energy for the week ahead? What's the overall energy for the week ahead? Are there any other messages for us for the collective in addition to these that we've already received? Are there any other messages? What is the overall energy for this week ahead? Post Sagittarius total solar eclipse, what is the overall energy for the week ahead? Okay, so it seems like we've got quite a bit of messages coming through. Um, we got five cards here, so let's dive in with the first ones that 
came up in pre as I was prepping for this reading. We've got spring to see your seeds grow. And we also got the stargazer to set your sights higher. And I feel like these are very specific messages. Um, the spring card, which, you know, when we think of the season of spring, we think of blooming, we think of, you know, finally seeing the seeds that we've sown sprout. We think of, you know, blooming and flourishing and abundance and just like coming out of winter and feeling the sun and the warmth. And so I feel like for many of us, we can anticipate post solar eclipse to see, um, to start witnessing certain seeds that we've been watering and planting and loving on and, and nourishing over the past 18 months, we're gonna start to see them grow. We're gonna start to see them bloom. We're gonna start to see them sprout. And that's really, really exciting. And so this is just an affirmation to get excited, to get ready and to know that the seeds that you've really been taking care of, the seeds that you've been investing in the past 18 months, now that this cycle has come to a close, we're stepping into the cycle, the season of seeing those seeds bloom. And this stargazer to set your sights higher is really just like, all right, now that we're stepping into this new beginning, now that we're stepping into this new cycle, it's time to set the bar high, all right? It's time to level up your standards, stand tall in them, be proud of them, and be shameless about the fact that you have these boundaries, you have these standards for yourself. And yes, you're gonna dream big. This is really dream big season post total solar eclipse and as we step into the new year as we step into this new cycle it's really a time of like you know dream big if you knew that you wouldn't fail what would you do that is a, a very popular reflectional journaling prompt that we've all heard of but it really is just such a beautiful prompt that reminds us of like okay you know fears aside you know what are my actual dreams like if I really allowed myself to dream big, what would those dreams be? So please give yourself space to really reflect on that and really allow yourself to dream big. Um, a card that has been coming up a lot in recent readings, and I think this is just because um, when we make a decision, it's very, very powerful. When we finally make a decision to go, on, go in a certain direction, to finally let go of something, to finally begin something, we are fully supported by our spirit team, by the most high, by the universe, by whatever higher power it is that you pray to, that you believe in, that you are like feeling called towards, we really get a lot of support. Have you ever noticed that like you finally make a decision, then everything just kind of starts working in your favor to assist you in that decision? So I feel like that's why the direction guardian to choose your path has really been coming up a lot because this really is a time for us to get clear on our direction get clear on our decisions what we want for ourselves for ourselves what what we need what our next steps are what kind of support um, we are calling in and receiving and accepting to really assist us in our ascension and in this direction that we're choosing to walk towards right so this really, again, is a time, now that we've stepped out of this 18-month cycle, this really is a time to get clear on your direction. What are you headed towards? Where are you going? Why are you going there? We also got the animal guardian to trust your instincts. My friends, this has been a theme. This has been an encouragement. This has been a nudge from the universe, from the most high, this whole year really the past 18 months of just like you know i feel like we really have been seeing so many experiences come up collectively and individually that are trying to align us and return us back home to ourselves in a way in which we lean on ourselves for guidance we lean on ourselves for intuitive messages we lean on ourselves for healing it's really been a cycle 
of us awakening to our own gifts, us awakening to our own power, and us awakening to the ways in which we are really there for ourselves and ultimately we know what's best for us. Ultimately, we have the answers within us. So let's continue to really cultivate that trust in ourselves. Let's continue to really lean in and trusting our intuition and also allowing our intuition to be a guiding light in the direction that we choose to go um, towards. We also got the oracle to wait for important information. I really feel like this is a time for us to really be investing in grounding practices as we're, we're naturally in the season of winter. And this is naturally a season of really nourishing ourselves, really kind of being home, um, hibernating, um, reflecting, spending time with self, slowing down. This is really such a great time to lean on uh, grounding practices and really open your channels up to receive information, really make yourself consciously and intentionally available to receive messages that you are meant to receive. So really just kind of see yourself as this figure, really you know do some practices whatever healing modalities whatever kind of practices that really call to you whether it's you know meditation burning sage doing rituals cleansing rituals taking salt baths whatever it is that makes you feel really connected to the divine um lean more into that and claim and affirm that you are open to receiving messages because there is some important information um, trying to make itself known to each and every single one of us at this time. All right, should any challenges arise, what energy do we lean into? Should any challenges arise? Should any challenges arise, what energy do we lean into this coming week post-solar eclipse? What energy do we lean into should any challenges arise? Should any challenges arise, what energy do we lean into? All right, my friends, we've got a few cards here again. So, all right, we've got community. We've got community. Should any challenges arise, you know, as much as yes, we've awakened to the ways that we are there for ourselves, that we can heal ourselves, that we can really be there for ourselves more than we recent than we've previously known, right? Because we really have been shown how much our codependency has come up, you know, and how much we have been dependent on others for answers, dependent on others for opportunity, dependent on others for healing, dependent on others for so many things. We've also awakened to the importance of community, right? Genuine, authentic, loving, supportive community. And perhaps you've already come into alignment with people, relationships, groups, clubs, whatever the case may be that you really align with, that really make you feel good, that really just feel in alignment with you spiritually. And it's important to remember, you know, that you do have a community available to you or, or a community that's becoming available to you and to allow yourself to receive help, allow yourself to allow others to love on you to be there for you right like let's really come into this balance of yes i got me but yes others got me too right let's really come into that balance we've also got simplicity and we also just you know when we see white feathers we think of our guardian angel we think of you know an omen we think of a sign that we are supported we are seen we have this divine presence with us. We are not alone. And I feel like that also is in touch with community, right? Remembering that we're not alone. So if any challenges arise, remember you're not alone, both spiritually and physically. 
both in the third dimension and the fifth dimension but we've got simplicity and i feel like when challenges arise really tune into the beautiful divine simplicities of life you know tap into your gratitude what is it that you are grateful for the little things right i'm grateful for my house plants i'm grateful for access to technology i'm grateful for the oracle decks that i have with me i'm grateful to be able to go on a walk in my neighborhood so really tap into the gratitude that is available in the little things, the simple things to assist you in vibrating higher when you're in a challenging moment. And also, you know, I feel like this is just also a gentle reminder that we do we, we often tend to blow things out of proportion, right? We make things harder for ourselves. We, we really do inflict our own suffering so much. And I think that that's also something we've awakened to in the past 18 months. And so really let's tap back into the simplicity of life, right? It's very complex, but it's also very simple. And we also don't have to make things harder on ourselves. So really just kind of, ask yourself you know how can i make this simpler how can i really allow myself to not cultivate this energy of challenge in my life action so sometimes when challenges arise it's a call to action right so that's really a, a practice of discernment for you to acknowledge whether this is a call to action or if this is a call to retreat. And sometimes it's both, right? Sometimes when a challenge arises, you wanna retreat for a bit, really collect yourself to make sure that you're responding to life and to the situation, the experience in a way in which that really serves you, that really is in alignment with your higher self, with this higher timeline that we're stepping into post-solar eclipse. But sometimes, you know, and after that, after you've collected yourself, after you've had that moment of stillness, of reflection, of grounding yourself, then it's time to take action. So there's that perspective, right? There's that side of the message when a challenge arises is really acknowledging like, okay, what is the call to action here? But also seeing the challenge itself as a call to action. Sometimes it's the challenge that is, um, a call to action of rearranging, realigning, rebalancing, pivoting us in a certain way that we're meant to at that time. So sometimes, you know, when, when a challenge arises, if you don't immediately feel like there's a call to action for you, maybe take a moment to reflect on how that challenge is a call to action in and of itself. What is this challenge transitioning in my life how is this challenge transforming transforming my life simply by showing up okay we also got freedom right self-liberation is really really big for us in the past 18 months and in the months to come really let's continue to focus on the ways in which we can liberate ourselves and tune into the perspective that a lot of the experiences in our lives are assisting our self-liberation as well. So free yourself. How, when a challenge arises, how can you free yourself from that challenge? And perhaps that can then lead you to the clarity on what the call to action is. But also with the imagery of the birds here, you know, and them having this higher perspective. It's also just this message of like really tuning into the higher perspective of it all. Don't be so congested and face to face with a challenge that you're not giving yourself enough room to really elevate and see the bigger picture of it all, right? Sometimes we can be so fixated on a problem that we're not able to really see the whole picture. We're not able to see the higher perspective Hopefully that was helpful for you. What do we focus on healing this week? What do we focus on healing this week? What do we focus on healing this week? Post total solar eclipse, what do we focus on healing this week? What do we focus on healing? What do we focus on healing this 
week post total solar eclipse. What do we focus on healing? What do we focus on healing? What do we focus on healing this week post total solar eclipse? Universe, angels, loving ancestors, guides, father in the sky, mother in the earth, sacred ones, guardians of the four corners, higher self. What do we focus on healing this week as a collective? What do we focus on healing this week? Okay. So we've got divine timing right divine timing let's really continue to come to the knowing that all is on divine time and not on our ego's time not on our time everything is on divine time because ultimately we're part of a bigger picture right we are all one we are all a part of this web of life it is not just all about us and so we can expect things to be all on our time because there's so many moving parts right all of our actions they not only affect us they affect everyone they affect everyone around us and because they affect everyone around us it affects everyone that's around them so it really is this bigger picture that is like just out of our control and it's important for us to continue to tune into and tap back into the knowing that everything is on divine time and that when something is meant to happen for you when it's like just on time for you it will happen in such a divine way so you know let's really continue to heal that perspective of like you know when things aren't happening the way that we want them to when we want them to let's heal our response to that and no longer you know start to start to stress or start to worry or start to doubt and really just remember like okay I know that as I just continue to do my best and I do this intentionally and I do this feeling called to do so, that that is all I need to do and that when it is meant to happen for me, it is going to happen on divine time. I don't need to worry. I don't need to stress. I don't need to doubt myself or doubt the universe and the most high just because it's not happening or unfolding or manifesting the way that I expected it to. We've also got new beginnings, right? There's a lot of healing that's gonna come into play simply because we are coming into this new beginning. And us stepping into this new cycle, as I said, is very healing in and of itself because we really are leaving behind an 18 month, 18 month cycle amongst this total solar eclipse we really are stepping in a new, new beginning and it's important for us to really claim that and really fully know that, right? Because it's only going to be a new beginning if you allow it to be so, right? And so just know that when you do allow yourself to step into this new cycle of your life, into this new beginning and really invest in you know how you want to show up in this new beginning in this new iteration of, of yourself of your life that it's going to be very very healing for you we've also got home so there's a lot of healing that's going to be taking place in our home lives in our relationship with home and i feel like that's simply because you know with holiday season many of us visiting families many of us returning back home many of us reflecting on home at this time again because we're naturally in this season of really being at home really kind of being in hibernation the themes of home and family and what that means for us and what our current relationship with home is is really coming up for us so there's a lot of healing available to us there all right what do we focus on surrendering what do we focus on surrendering this week what do we focus on surrendering this week what do we focus on surrendering this week post solar eclipse what do we focus 
on surrendering. Okay, I'm not gonna shuffle more because we already got four cards here. We're gonna start with the card that came up for me as I was prepping for this reading. So this one is like really the one that wanted to come up for us and trying to make itself known. So we've got surrender your belief in scarcity. My friends, the scarcity based mindset, the scarcity timeline is a timeline that we are leaving behind, right? Post total solar eclipse and into this new cycle, we are tapping into an abundant mindset, okay? We live in an abundant universe. There is enough for each and every single one of us to thrive. The universe is asking you to open to the infinite nature of abundance. In this way, you can re remove blocks in your life and succeed beyond your wildest dreams. And as we set our sights higher, as we really allow ourselves to dream big and believe that it is possible for us, we're going to need to surrender our belief in scarcity. We're going to need to surrender and let go of any remnants of scarcity that is in our mind, okay? We've also got surrender unhealthy relationships. Again, this new beginning that we are stepping into is going to be very, very healing for us because we are prioritizing healthy relationships. I mean, not only because of that, but in large part, right? I know that the theme of relationships really came up for us a lot in the past 18 months. So this is really a time to let go of relationships that don't serve you, including unavailable or toxic people you deserve to be treasured by others and to be surrounded by positive people you deserve to be surrounded by folks to be in alignment with folks that really just feel so fulfilling to you that really just feel so good to you and feel like there's this mutual it's a relationship of being mutual, mutually beneficial to each other, right? I benefit you, you benefit me. Our presence in each other's lives benefits each other, all right? We are in this, we're stepping into a timeline of really prioritizing balance in our lives, right? I'm not over giving, I'm not under giving, I'm really, you know, prioritizing and allowing and, and accepting relationships in my life that really reciprocate this balance, that really are invested in me the way I'm invested in them and vice versa. So please, y'all, this is a time to surrender those unhealthy relationships. I know that sometimes it can be so hard. I know that sometimes there's relationships that you don't want to let go of. You're so bummed that it's you know unfolding the way that it is and you never thought it would be this way but you got to do what's best for you and, and I know that that can sound selfish but it's not because when we prioritize what is the most good for us and we really allow ourselves to vibrate higher in every aspect of our lives we're contributing to the higher vibration of the whole world of the collective so it's really bigger than us Surrender to rest and sleep, you know, again, because we're in the season of winter, we're naturally in the season of hibernation and home and being with ourselves and being introspective. Please allow yourselves to rest and to sleep, to prevent burnout, slow down, honor your need for quiet time and peaceful sleep to rejuvenate your mind, body and spirit. Please allow yourselves to slow down. You're not missing out on anything. Remember, everything is happening in divine time. Your efforts are felt by the most high and that's all that matters. So allow yourself to rest. You're deserving of rest. Rest is your birthright, okay? You need that time. We have not evolved out of rest, out of sleep, y'all, okay? We haven't evolved out of that as a human species. We'll st we still need rest and sleep. Okay, sleep really is such a rejuvenating time for us and it assists us in vibrating higher. It assists us in going after our biggest dream. It assists us in our healing. Also surrender obsessive thinking. If you're obsessing about a person or situation, turn the dilemma over to spirit. Doing so will help you, will help bring you clarity or even solve the problem. Again, y'all, we are not burdening ourselves with energy and problems that do not belong to us, with responsibilities that are not ours. Please surrender obsessive thinking. If 
a relationship, a person, a situation immediately came to mind when I brought that card up, then this message, this uh, card is definitely for you. So just remember that you don't have to be the savior, okay? And a lot of the times we think that, you know, if we love more, if we're more present, if we affirm them more, if we, you know, do more, if we, you know, in any way, shape or form that we will change the person, we will change the situation. But a lot of the times when it gets to this point where we become obsessive and we become like we start depleting ourselves in any way, shape or form because we're giving more than we are receiving, we're bringing ourselves out of balance. At that point, it's really out of our hands, right? And we really got to just leave it up to the divine. We really just got to turn the situation over to spirit and trust that it's all going to be taken care of um it's all going to be taken care of the way that it's meant to okay all right we've got three affirmations here so the first one we've got i release all fears and doubts yes 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 we're letting go of fear we're stepping into love based everything so I accept myself and create peace in my mind and heart. I now choose to free myself from all destructive fears and doubts. I am loved and I am safe. I am worth loving. I do not have to earn love. I am lovable because I exist. Others reflect the love I have for myself. Trust that as you continue to heal yourself, as you, as you continue to love yourself, as you continue to pour into yourself, you're going to be attracting and aligning with other folks who are also doing the same for themselves. And it's really going to be this beautiful um, alignment and coming togetherness of two people and um, two spirits that really are in this space of high vibration and love of self and because you're pouring into yourselves you can pour into each other in such beautiful ways and i'm sure that some of you have already experienced this um, have already experienced aligning with opportunities and relationships and uh, environments, experiences that really reflect the healing you've been doing, that really reflect the efforts you've been putting into yourself. And it just feels so good to your spirit and to your soul. So continue to invest in that and allow that to cultivate in your life, those beautiful divine alignments. I am at peace with my age. Each age has its own special joys and experiences. I am always the perfect age for where I am in life. My friends, if any of you have been feeling like you're running out of time because of your age or anything like that, please let that go. Please surrender that. I know that the society makes it hard to really believe that at any point in your life, you can start over, you can do something for the first time, you can really begin anew in a way that you feel called to, that you feel passionate about. Please, like, don't let society influence you in such a way that it has so much power over you that it stops you from living your best life, okay? Don't give that much power away to any external source. We're not doing that anymore. You wanna go do something, you wanna pivot, you wanna reinvent yourself, you wanna try something new, regardless if you're 15, 18, 25, 37, 40, like whatever, 90, whatever age you are, age is not a limit, okay? The limits that we create for ourselves are all in our minds. And what is in our minds sometimes isn't even from us. It's from society. It's from social media. It's from, you know, all this programming that isn't serving us, that's holding us back. So we're no longer allowing anything to hold us back from what we're feeling called to do, from what we're really excited about the possibility of. We're leaning into that because, again, we are embodying the stargazer now. We're setting our sights higher. And we are freeing ourselves, my friends. Yes, 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 yes. So cheers to this post total solar eclipse, my friends. Really 
continue to invest in yourselves. I hope that this reading was helpful helpful to you and that you resonated with one or more of the messages. And if you did, please let me know in the comments below. I love connecting with you all there. If you feel like a homie, so a loved one needs to watch this reading, then send over the reading to them. Give this video a thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. So thank you all so much. I love and appreciate you. Peace and blessings. Bye.